Hey, this is Mike from SNO50 TV talking about boxing. And today I'm going to be talking about Eddie Hearn, his latest interview he did with Boxing Social. I'm going to go in detail about it. And do you know what's what I'm going to do? I'm going to play the clips that the highlights of what he was talking about. And I'm going to give you my opinion on it. So this is going to be quite a long video. I might split it into segments. I don't know. I'm just going to say what I feel about what he's talking about. And then when I put it on, you can watch the whole thing. So without further ado, we're going to get cracking. But before I do, hit that subscribe button and that like button if you're liking this video because I'm planning to do more videos like this on the regular. And I want to see your feedback. What's your opinions on this whole thing? So anyways, let's get started. I mean, you can't criticize Ryan Garcia because he's swerving Devin Haney. He's calling out Tank Davis, but something, I don't know. I, I just don't, Oscar De La Hoya, Robert Diaz, Eric Gomez, they know boxing. And they know that was a big risk fighting Luke Campbell. And like I said, in the second round, I think they were probably thinking, all my life, what's going on here? But they also know that uh, Ryan Garcia, he's not ready to tank. You know, there were a lot of unanswered questions about Devin Haney. I believe Devin Haney could be the best 135 pounder in the world, but he has to prove it. And this is the frustrating thing for Devin is he wants, you know, don't forget he went down the WBC route to fight Lomachenko to become his mandatory. And now we need that breakout fight. And I don't feel like that breakout fight is Javier Fortuna, who's a good fighter, but we need that breakout high profile fight. And we were so happy when Luke Campbell and Ryan Garcia got made because Devin, Devin Haney's fighting the winner. I mean, obviously I wanted Luke to win, but I particularly wanted Luke to win because I knew Luke would fight Devin Haney for the WBC world title. So you know, when you look at Ryan Garcia against Javonta Davis, one's with the zone, one's with Fox or at Showtime, you know, I, I can't, you know, Javonta's not going to fight on the zone. Ryan Garcia contractually through Golden Boy can't box on Fox. So is that just to get people talking or, you know, is there something going on? I know that from the zone's point of view, the zone want to make Devin Haney against Ryan Garcia in April. That's, that's the fight. That's the fight. Yes, Ryan Garcia, the zone, Javonta Davis on Fox or Showtime. But, Yes, it can happen if the networks, if the fighters, if the promoters want it to happen. Is cross promotion has happened before. Uh, you know, especially with the zone fighters, especially with matchroom fighters, where they're for ESPN fighters. Now we know that PBC has got a history of not wanting their fighters to fight outside of the PBC brand, which he may be referring to as to why that might be difficult. But PBC, make no mistake, if they see an opportunity for an easy win, and that's on the DAZN side, or on the ESPN side, then PBC will have no hesitation in making sure the fight gets made. So do I think Ryan Garcia is ready for Javonta Davis? That's a separate question altogether. But can the fight be made? I believe the fight can be made. And based on what Ryan Garcia and Javonta Davis, both of them want it, that's half the job done already. But Devin, I spoke to him the other day and I just said, you know, April, Ryan Garcia, that's what we're hoping for. No, no chance, no chance. I mean, obviously they've got history um, from the amateurs. Maybe Devin just knows better than me and maybe Ryan Garcia doesn't want to fight. Devin Haney knows better than you. Devin Haney knows that Ryan Garcia doesn't want to fight him next. Ryan Garcia has made it clear pre-fight, during the fight, after the fight, he has no intentions of fighting Devin Haney next. The only fight he wants next is Javonta Davis. Now, is he ready to fight Javonta Davis? No, he's not. So, Eddie, you already said that you think he's not ready to fight Javonta Davis. So, what makes you believe he's ready to fight Devin Haney? Devin Haney will beat Ryan Garcia. 
So you kind of, you know, what, what, what is it you want? You want, everyone wants to be the first person to beat Garcia because Garcia is food. He is food to everybody. And that's basically the reasons why. But no, Devin Haney knows Ryan Garcia. They've got a very respectful relationship from what I've seen. So, and based on what everything that Ryan Garcia is saying, this fight is not going to happen next. But, but let's look at that era, right? Sugar Ray Leonard, Marvin Hagler, Tommy Hearns, uh, Roberto Duran. They all boxed each other and numerous times. And that's what we have to do. So Tiafimo, Tank, Devin, and Ryan Garcia. Let's start making the fights. They, they can have trilogies. I mean, whatever. It doesn't matter, but they're all so young. There was the Four Kings back in the days. He's probably talking about Tommy Hearns, Duran, Sugar Ray, and Hagler. So he's talking about that. But let's not forget, those guys fought over, over, over a span of many, many years in many, many weight classes. These guys are very young. Javon is probably the oldest at 27, but then you've got Devin Haney, 21, 22, 22, 23, they're around that age. So technically, if they wanted to go on with their careers, they have 13 years technically in the sport. That's if they wanted to retire at, let's say 34, 35. So these guys have got 13 years, potentially. Javonna Davis has probably got another 10 years in him for them to all to fight each other. And let's not get it twisted. They could all end up fighting at welterweight. They're at 135 right now. They can easily have a wait until they eat, reach 140 and then they fight. Have another fight at 147. You know, so they have got many years to fight down the line. And, you know, this is the, the key to it is let's not rush the fights of the fighters who are not ready there yet. So, you know, I was winding up Tiafimo in, in Texas, you know, and said, you're not undisputed because yeah, I know Tiafimo just brought a t-shirt range out, undisputed. I think he should call that those back in, you know, and change the, change the logo. Because I did say to him, and, and this is my honest opinion, he should be undisputed. You know, we shouldn't be in this position that we're in, but he is not undisputed because the other governing bodies do not recognize the franchise champion as someone that can unify and you know so the only way he can be undisputed by fact and on paper is to fight Devin Haney. He deserves to be undisputed. He beat the number one lightweight who used to be undisputed in, in Vasily Lomachenko. So I disagree with Eddie Hearn there. I don't think that Team of Female should be undisputed because let's face facts. It should be Devin Haney that should have been man taken at mandatory to fight Lomachenko for the belt. And if Devin Haney did what he was supposed to do and beat um, Lomachenko, then Lomachenko would be fighting. And it, could, it would have been Devin Haney versus Timofimo for the undisputed belt sooner rather than Lomachenko. And as we don't recognize the franchise belt, then that fight was never, in my opinion, for undisputed. So no, Lopez should not be undisputed. If he wants to face undisputed, he needs to fight Devin Haney, full stop. I think, I think Tiafimo Lopez against uh, Haney is a wonderful fight. Listen, he asked me for $10 million for that fight. You know, we can't get there, but I'm sure we can make him a nice offer. But uh, Tiafimo is a nightmare at the moment. You know, for Bob Aaron. I mean, like, and Bob's not mincing his words at the moment. He's had enough. So he's saying, I want this, five million minimum. I want eight, I want nine, I want 10. So right now, I'll leave that to Bob and top rank, you know, to to put those numbers together because in this world right now, it ain't going to happen. You know what? I don't know about this. You know, Eddie Hearn, he, he, he seems like he's not keen on making the fight. He seems like he's very down on the Timofimo Lopez, Devin Haney fight. I think that that's the fight he really, really should be making next because that fight is for undisputed. Now, Devin Haney has got one fight left on his contract. Now, if you was going to be a good businessman, Eddie, which I know you got the potential there to be doing, you will be going, all right, put the money up. 
All right, we know it's not going to be 10 million. Timmy Fimo was being a little bit silly there with 10 million offer and all that stuff. But put a realistic offer on the table. You know how much he got for Lomachenko. He got like, what, two, three mil? And now he's saying he wants a million five mil per fight? Put a realistic offer on the table. We know he's going to fight his mandatory Cambosos for the I with the IBF mandatory. But we know that fight's not going to be in Australia now. So he's not going to be getting the multi, the five, 10 million that he wants to fight Cambosos. So you can easily dive in there, throw a little, throw a bone in there, throw, throw an offer, a very enticing offer that they seem very reasonable. The dad and those guys, they seem very reasonable. And I'm swear that you can use your charm, use the Eddie Hearn, earn with Hearn charm. And I'm sure that we could make that fight happen. Devin Haney versus Timothy Lopez. But I just don't believe from his body language, from what he is saying and how he's saying it, that he does not believe that that fight can be made next. Before we get, um, get cracking and, and move on, one thing I do want to discuss, uh, particularly about the January the 2nd card, is the commentary on the zone. Uh, the broadcast on the zone came in for a lot of criticism on Fight Night. I know you would have seen it. Just your response to that. I think that um, it's good. I think that's what the zone need. I mean, they're a new platform. They're learning all the time. They're evolving all the time. Um, I think one thing they probably didn't realise, which we all know, is that UK boxing fans are 462 times more vocal than US boxing fans, right? So if they don't like something, it blows up the internet, which is good. I mean, I love the passion of UK fight fans. And if they think that I've done something that's shit, they'll tell me. You know, I think the zone have got a good team. I think they're mixing it around. They're learning. Um, they've got a lot of work to do for their UK broadcast as well. Um, but given the feedback, I think Joe Markowski put a tweet out and said, look, guys, we welcome feedback. I mean, no one's hiding. You know, no one's going, oh, my God, we get someone didn't like them. Someone didn't like them. You know, everybody's subjective. I actually think that Chris Mannix is a fantastic uh, broadcaster. Um, I just think, uh, you know, I had a bit of backwards and forwards with him about, you know, he loves Ryan Garcia, loves Ryan Garcia. So I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm messaging him going, why aren't you talking about Devin Haney fight? It's the mandatory fight. The zone won it. And, and you're saying that this guy's the, the next coming of Muhammad Ali can fight anyone he wants. He's the A-side against the entire pound for pound division. I think the commentators, they focus too much on, oh, wow, they're doing a knockouts rather than the actual performances. They've got very good boxers. They've got Demetrius Andrade. They've got um, uh, they've got Billy Joe Saunders. They've got Devin Haney. They're both slick, move, hit and not get hit boxers. And I think that the commentary tree that they've got on there, Chris Mannix, and they've got um, uh, Mora, Mora, Mora. I think that these guys need to show the little bit of nuances in there. Maybe you need to change the, the team a little bit then. You know, mix it up. Have Chris Mannix in one fight, have another commentary um, a commentary person or another person, have a, a color commentator, just mix it up a little bit because I feel like these commentators, they're not, and also as well, they need to promote the fighters a little bit more. They need to hype them up a little bit more. Demetrius Andrade is a beast. He's a beast. Devin Haney is a beast. And I think you need to hype up these people a little bit more. They're part of the zone, highlight their strengths, highlight this is one thing that the other people the other commentators do they highlight the fight art very very good and i don't think that the zone commentators don't do that enough and i think that's something that they need to work on if they don't believe in it fair enough get somebody else in get somebody else to do the job because at the end of the day they're the zone fighters and the only way you're going to get more people to the platform is if you promote you promote you promote and that's something that the ufc is very good at doing very good at doing. USC is the best at promoting fighters. When their fighters fight, they're very good at pushing them to the moon and say, this person is the best since sliced bread. And I ain't seen you guys talk enough about these people like Devin Haney. You haven't seen them talk about like Andrade, Billy Joe Saunders. They need to be pushed more when they're fighting because these are excellent, excellent, high quality fighters. Moving on, Eddie, final quick few before I let you go. Canelo Alvarez, what's going on with Canelo? We've seen you and Canelo, we've seen you and Eddie Reynoso. I've seen some rumours about Canelo possibly boxing Avni Yildirim on Fox and then going on to box Caleb Plant. I've also seen rumours about him boxing Yildirim on the zone and going on to box Billy Joe Saunders. What can you tell me about those two? 
Um, I think all scenarios are in play. Um, obviously, I'm trying to land Billy Joe Saunders fight for, for Billy Joe Saunders. Um, I think you're right in what you said. I think he's got offers to fight Yildrim um, and Plant on Fox. And we would like him to fight a Yildrim um, and then go on and fight Billy Joe Saunders after that. That's the fight that I want to deliver. It's the biggest fight in boxing. So I'm working my nuts off trying to do that. If Billy doesn't get that fight, he'll fight uh, Demetrius Andre in America around the same time. Um, so he's, he's sitting in a good position right now. But of course, that's the fight. That's the fight that turns you into a superstar. That's the fight I think Billy's always wanted. So um, I, you know, have, have had a good relationship with Canelo and, and Eddie Reynoso through the uh, promotion of the Callum Smith fight. They seem to enjoy working with me, which is um, humbling. And, you know, I think wherever they end up or whatever fights they take, I think, you know, hopefully I'll be involved. Well, if I was to put my money on it, I'll say that Canelo is more likely to fight on zone than he is going to be fighting on PBC and Fox. Just because that zone number one, has got the money and number two, zone needs him more. Let's remember... The Zone is primarily boxing on the main uh, platforms, which is in England and the, in, in the USA. And they need to build their subscriber base. They cannot afford to let the number one boxer in the world, other than AJ, to fight somewhere else. Simple as that. Fox, they don't have the money to pay Canelo what he is worth. Um, and are they going to be paying him a huge fee to fight Yildrim, a mandatory that nobody hasn't heard of? I don't think so. So, whereas I think the zone is willing to pay the money to fight a Yildrim plus fight Billy Joe, which that was the original plan in the first place. So I believe that Eddie Hearn will sign that deal. And, Eddie, and it seems like Canelo was very happy with Eddie Hearn at first and uh, working with him previously. So I think that if I was putting money on it, don't be surprised if he's fighting on the zone for his next two fights. What's the situation with Alexander Usyk? He's now out of contract with Matrix, is that right? Mm, yeah, so, well, he, unless we deliver the uh, AJ fight. So it's, you know, I think that it's, um, it's a situation where People just, some people just, uh, and this isn't really a dig at any of his team or anything, but some people just have the idea that he should be getting millions of dollars to step aside for this fight. Really, what will happen is we will apply to the WBA for the undisputed fight. Okay. Um, and if they say, no, you need to talk to Alexander Usyk, we will go to Alexander Usyk and we will try and make him happy. At the moment, uh, Eddie Hearn is trying to negotiate, trying to uh, trying to lower the expectations of what um, Usyk's going to get. But let's make no mistake, Usyk is going to get the bag to step aside. He knows it. I know it. Eddie Hearn knows it. Anthony Joshua knows it. Tyson Fury knows it. To make the fight happen, it's going to happen. If Usyk says, you know what, give me 10 million, I'll step aside. They're going to do it. They're, they're gonna make huge money from this fight. They're probably gonna make what? 100 million each, 75 million each. That's even excluding the pay-per-view. So they're probably gonna make upwards of 100. So let's say Eddie Hearn goes, all right, I give you five. And then he goes to Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury says, look, between you, you're gonna get 110 million each, probably over two fights. How about you give me a little bit of two here, 2.5 here and then we make it a five we give him 10 then that's it he keeps quiet and then we'll, we'll fight him later on down the line i think if i was anthony joshua if i was tyson fury i'll i'll take that no problem do the math you do the math you get 100 million 2.5 out of that to give to usik to step aside T uh, tyson fury step aside hey it's worth it if you get in the undisputed fight and you make that money back of pay-per-view, sponsorships, all that kind of stuff. You, you, merchandise sales, all that, you make it back easily. So in regards to the Usyk step aside situation, I don't think it's going to be a big hurdle. 
Um, their team has already relented. They spoke to uh, Michelle Joy Phelps a while back and they said, no, undisputed, undisputed. But we all knew, I knew, like, you know, end of the day, you can't turn down that kind of step aside money to not to fight. They're paying you millions and millions of pounds not to fight. I haven't seen anybody who's turned down millions and millions and millions and millions of pounds not to fight. So yes, and since then they've already relented, they've already indicated that they're willing to take some money. So as soon as they indicated that they're willing to take money, it's game over. Eddie Hearn will sort it. And at the end of the day, the fight is gonna happen for Undisputed. It's gonna happen. So don't worry about it, guys. It's gonna happen. I got faith in Eddie. We trust. So there you go, guys. That is me giving you my thoughts on the Eddie Hearn interview. If you liked it, leave a comment, leave a like. I like to see what you guys have to say. What do you guys think of Eddie Hearn's comments in regards to the Anthony Joshua Fury fight, Devin Haney, Ryan Garcia, the regards to the fights that's coming up in February? Like, we'll leave your comments. I want to hear what everything what you guys have to say. If you like this kind of video, let me know. I'll do some more of these videos um, down the line. Hey, remember, I'm going to try and do a video every day going forward via me not being sick or dead. So watch this space. And also as well, I did a video on my reaction to Ryan Garcia and Luke Campbell. So if you want to watch that, head on to that next video and have a look at that video there of my reaction to Ryan Garcia and Luke Campbell. Anything else you want me to talk about, let me know and I'm going to talk about it.